at the same time we should admit that there are certain challenges in the cooperation of the two countries our learned speakers would also touch upon the hurdles which are faced or might be faced in times to come ladies and gentlemen connectivity between pakistan and uzbekistan is not something new it dates back to as old as the ancient silk road with the passage of time it has taken several names and shapes it has seen the highs and lows of time but the concept in itself is ancient and time tested in today's globalized world the road between pakistan and uzbekistan would not simply end at some city of pakistan making pakistan the only market for uzbek produce and vice versa in fact it would open other continents of the world to uzbekistan and other countries of the region to pakistan without further wait let us move to our first speaker professor dr adam saud he is serving in bahriya university pakistan as dean faculty of humanities and social sciences he has a master's degree in political science and a doctorate in international relations he has written 42 research articles and has presented 30 papers in national and international conferences he would be speaking about the historical aspect of pakistan uzbekistan relations dr adam saud the floor is yours please bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim assalam alaikum everybody uh, good morning from islamabad actually i'm trying to connect my uh, video but uh, it doesn't work actually so i'm sorry i would be just uh, presenting my <clears throat> uh, speech audio um, if i can share my screen uh can i share my screen for my presentation please thank you all right <clears throat> first of all i'm really grateful to the organizers uh, for inviting me to discuss on this very very important uh, topic actually um, i have been assigned with the recent history of pakistan and uzbekistan relations and uh, we know that uh, pakistan and uzbekistan historically uh, we had been very close to each other particularly during the uh, pre you know occupation of uh, the central asian region modern day central asian region and uh, um, hindustan at that time and we had very good relation but uh, since the occupation of these two regions and particularly the soviet rule in uh, central asia put an iron curtain between the two regions so we our, our relations our trade ties social contacts they were cut down but obviously when the uh, central asian states particularly uzbekistan it got independence so there were four high hopes among the pakistani society that we are going to revive all those relations with the um, with uzbekistan and more importantly we were successful enough to uh, launch a relaunch or reconnect with this region in a positive way unfortunately during the 1990s we know that uh, this region had been uh, turbulent due to the geo strategic and geopolitical happenings and we were unable to have that kind of connectivity which was desired and which was the need of the time however you know despite all the multi roads we were still able to connect at least politically uh, uh, with uzbekistan and uzbekistan also was very keen to have sound and stable relations with pakistan so if we if we uh, look uh, uh, you know uh, uh, right from the beginning we see that uh, pakistan uh, was the third country which opened its embassy in uzbekistan so here you know we can imagine the importance which pakistan gave to uzbekistan at that time because it's not only that uh, we had you know historical relations but keeping in view the central location of uzbekistan within the region because it borders with all the rest of the four central asian states and obviously it had it still has the largest population in the region uh as i have already discussed you know the relations they were slow but uh, at a steady pace they, they were uh, you know going towards the right direction that we are going to have uh, sound and good relations in all the fields so if you look at uh, the uh, you know uh, political and the uh, official stance i would say both the countries they share, share similar views on major regional and international issues 
And it is uh, also encouraging that the direct flights between both the countries, they were started initially by the PIA and then Uzbek Airways. But we know that due to COVID, the Uzbek Airways, it had to shut down its direct flights from uh, Uzbekistan to Pakistan. Uh, both the states, they had been engaging with each other onto, into different fields and multiple MOUs, they have been signed where uh, both the states, they are coordinating and they are strengthening their relations into the multiple fields. And we see that the there had been a change in the uh, kind of these MOUs where we were focusing primarily onto the uh, primary commodities and the raw materials, but now we have shifted towards you know multiple sectors, particularly science and technology and production. And the other important and the encouraging aspect is that we see our students they are, are preferring Uzbekistan as one of the destinations for their education, particularly into the uh, medical field. So this these two um, uh, you know fields are encouraging so far our relation with um, the the Central Asian states are concerned, and importantly Uzbekistan are concerned. Um, the 2008 financial crisis, obviously, that, that slowed down the economic activity at the global level as well as the regional level. Therefore, we see that, that it also was uh, one of the drivers, one of the you know uh, reasons where we see that our relations, the both the bilateral relations between the two countries, they also slowed down because of the economic crunch and crisis. We have so many similarities. Uh, I need not to explain in detail. Everybody knows that Uzbekistan and Pakistan their culture is almost similar. So when I once, for the, for the first time I visited Uzbekistan back in 2013, you know, it was really amazing experience for me. And I was really amazed to know that how close we and the people are. And then, you know, I have visited three times to Uzbekistan and I declare it my second home because I never feel any kind of dissimilarity or, you know, problem over there. I always feel that I'm in my own country. Uh, Cultural and religious similarities, you know, uh, we know that even uh, their their uh, marriages and our marriages, their their you know, uh, most of the social you know events, we have almost same kind of uh, um, you know um, happenings which which occur in those social events. Uh, another important similarity is that both Pakistan and Uzbekistan, they are one of the youngest nations in the world. Their population, you know, the fifteen to uh, 40 uh, years age population is almost equal to Pakistan. So here we can say that uh, both the states, they are really young nations and they can do a lot for the regional development as well as for the global development. Uh, although uh, uh, Excellency Ibuk Arif Usmanov, who is the ambassador of Uzbekistan to Pakistan, he claims that there are 40,000 common words between Uzbek and Urdu languages. But what I have... Uh, uh, researched is there are almost 4,000 common words uh, with, with the similar meanings and with the similar, you know, background in both the languages. So again, if, uh, so, so back in 2021, when I was in, in Tashkent and I was discussing uh, uh, different, you know, social um, realities with my host over there. And when we were discussing about, you know, uh, the common words, uh, one of my hosts said that, so if I go to Pakistan and I'm lost somewhere, I hope I would get back to my destination very easily because of these common words. Uh, then we have a very important uh, commonality that is a common stance over the Islamophobia between the two countries. Now, if you look uh, quickly onto the political engagements, obviously we know that political engagements, for so far political engagements are concerned. Primarily, most of the countries in the world, they have similar stances over there, except those where you have certain differences. Uh, since with, with Uzbekistan, we had never any conflict. We don't have any, you know, uh, um, divergence of interest, particularly onto the important uh, regional as well as global, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, issues. So we can say that both these states they are politically very much close to each other. And over the period of time, we see we have uh, the common membership of multiple regional and international organizations. So therefore, what happens? You know, it's not only the bilateral. Uh, uh, delegations or visits, but whenever we get chance uh, in regional and international forums where we have common membership, we meet over there and we discuss, you know, uh, our 
um, matters at the sidelines of those kind of uh, conferences and uh, summits. Um, the most important thing is that, you know, both the countries, they share their borders with Afghanistan, and we know that instability in Afghanistan is one of the challenges so far, connectivity between the two states are concerned. I'm, I'm sure the next speaker who would be discussing onto it would be giving, you know, a real insight. But what I want to say is that, you know, both the states, they have similar point of view that the conflicts and instability in Afghanistan should be resolved according to the wishes of the people of Afghanistan and all the region states, they must have a constructive engagement over there. For, for that, you know, whenever there are uh, formulas and efforts, both the states, they put in their energies and uh, support all those initiatives. Uh, I would be focusing on the trade relations because we know that trade relations are very important to bring um, uh, any countries, regions together. And this is a reality of uh, today as well. So I'll start with the joint ventures again, according to the uh, ambassador of Uzbekistan to Pakistan, he told me that we have almost 250 joint ventures where uh, companies from both the countries, they are they are working onto it. And we see that uh, the bilateral trade volume, it has increased multi, uh, multi times. Uh, for example, if we compare it uh, with 2003 to 2022, so in 2003, the uh, bilateral volume of trade, it was only a merely 4.5 million, which has reached up to 300 million in year 2022. So I hope if we look into the you know, exact figures of 2023, it would definitely have surpassed $300 million um, uh, landmark. So it's, it's, you know, it's clearly depicts that how both the states, they are increasing their trade relations. Uh, we know that when Imran Khan, he paid a visit to Uzbekistan uh, when there was an official, um, you know, summit, South and Central Asia connectivity, there were $500 million worth of agreements which were signed over there. Now, we see that uh, that was the time when uh, both these states, they started their relations, uh, or they, they, the, the boom of, you know, um, relations, it started after that uh, particular visit. Because we know that Uzbekistan realized it, uh, um, um, their destiny for development and progress lies uh, to you know uh, uh, through their uh, their connectivity to international markets through the South Asian region, particularly. So that was the time when they decided they should be you know focusing on to Pakistan because through Iran they are they are they are doing their their trade, but primarily you know due to the uh, sanctions on Iran, international sanctions on Iran, they are facing so many troubles. So they have decided that we are going to, um, you know, uh, use the Pakistani uh, transit trade route for their international trade. So in that particular context, that was July 2021, when Pakistan-Uzbekistan transit trade agreement, it was signed. And we see that under that agreement, after that agreement, direct uh, you know, uh, trucks from Pakistani port of Karachi to Tashkan, they, uh, they, they started their function directly uh, and they did not, you know, offload or uh, they did not uh, shift it there. They do not shift now, you know, their, their cargo at the borders. They just go to Tashkan and uh, vice versa as well. And more importantly, through Tashkan, we have reached to now Almaty as well. So it's, it's you know, positive development so far, Pakistan and Uzbekistan relations are concerned. Then we signed the preferential trade agreement in March 2022. Obviously, you know, uh, it's going to have a long time to bring uh, the force into it, but, you know, we have already taken this step. And the most important, uh, uh, you know, um, event was the strategic partnership that was signed in 2022 between the two states. Obviously, we know that this strategic partnership, it is a comprehensive partnership where uh, almost all the uh, aspects, you know, political, um, social, cultural, even defense, you know, trade, everything is um, uh, covered under this strategic partnership. And we see that after that, again, the relationship are getting uh, further stabilized and further strengthening, actually. The important, uh, the most important uh, project is the Trans Railway, uh, Trans Afghan Railway project. And uh, the project that was initiated by Uzbekistan, and this project has been declared as a game changer by the Pakistani Foreign Office as well. Because once we are connected 
uh, through this rail, railway project to Tirmez, then, excuse me, like I've already said that once you are into Uzbekistan, you can reach to any country of Central Asia and even to, you can easily reach to Russia as well. So uh, briefly, you know, I will talk about the realities of this project once it is materialized. The project is set to cut transportation time from 13 to 15 days, you know, half, and the expenses would be cut down from uh, almost up to 30 to 35 percent. And uh, even it would slash the transportation cost between Russia and Pakistan by 15 to 20 percent. Uh, another important aspect of this railway line is that it would connect the China, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan railway line that is under construction. And we know that Chinese BRA project, or we can say the Chinese Central Asia, West Asia um, corridor, it uh, it, one of the major arteries of that uh, corridor uh, will be this China, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan railway project. So, you know, uh, we would be at the juncture of uh, that corridor as well. And then another landmark was February 2023 when we signed uh, a trade deal of $1 billion. So this is a uh, hallmark so far, the trade, trade uh, bilateral trade between the two countries are concerned. And uh, we see that the beside, like, you know, uh, uh, primary products. Now we see that new avenues they have been included, particularly chemical industry, agriculture, machinery, housing and construction, electrotechnical goods, and so on. You know, these are the new avenues, new new um, you know uh, aspects which have been included into the bilateral trade of two countries. Now again, like I was discussing, that Uzbekistan's major focus is on to the south now, particularly on Pakistan. Therefore, we see they have establish their international cargo center that is made, Termiz, uh, that borders with Afghanistan. So that international cargo center is going to help and uh, uh, not only to, to increase the trade between Uzbekistan and Pakistan, but Uzbekistan international trade as well. And they are going to, you know, um, um, work on to the, um, the, the customs and all those modalities and, uh, you know, formalities which have to uh, be fulfilled when you have that kind of bil bilateral trade. Uh, so, you know, having that central position right in the heart of Central Asia, Uzbekistan is really a source of strength for Pakistan, and that Pakistan has realized it very well. So by the end of the uh, my presentation, I would conclude that both the countries are onto the right path, and uh, the need is that, you know, uh, we should be uh, cooperating and poor. And the positive thing is, you know, uh, back in 1990s when Taliban 1.0, they came to power. So both the states, they had a kind of divergent views. Uzbekistan was against the Taliban regime. Pakistan recognized them. But this time, you see, Uzbekistan is uh, also, um, uh, in fact, supporting and cooperating with the Taliban regime because all the states in the region, they have realized that Taliban's regime in Afghanistan is a reality. And the only solution is constructive engagement with them. So we see that Uzbekistan is also very proactive so far. Afghanistan's stability is concerned. Uh, but, you know, direct flights, we are missing the direct flights back in 2021 when I visited. I had to, uh, you know, travel all the way uh, through Istanbul. So it was hectic and, you know, a very long flight. So this is very important. And uh, I hope both the embassies, both the, the governments, they are working on it and soon we'll be uh, you know, uh, listening to the good news that direct flights have been resumed. And I would urge both the states to have easy visa policies uh, for, for, you know, visitors and the business community and all that. And the strengthening of business to business relations. So B2B is a business to business. But what I want to say is it's brothers to brothers relations. So we are brothers, uh, both the nations, they are brothers. So we should be strengthening the relations. And the good thing is that, um, Pakistani students, they are going over there, and we expect that these big students would also be um, visiting and studying in the Pakistani universities and Pakistani education institutions. So, and the, 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 the you know, exchange programs uh, where faculty and students, they can go and come on the exchange programs. Um, the Ziarat, you know, um, uh, tourism is, so these are certain suggestions which I can give from my side. The rest, you know, the policymakers are sitting over there, they would be in a better position to I thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Adam Saud. Indeed, both the countries are uh, cooperating closely on regional and global 
issues, including Islamophobia. Uh, before we move to the next speaker, I would uh, I would uh, kindly request all the speakers to kindly keep in mind the uh, time available. I would request all to keep the presentations pressed, maybe eight to ten minutes. Uh, thank you so much for that. And now I would invite our second speaker, Professor Dr. Bahadur Turayev. He is currently serving as Deputy Rector of Tashkent State Transport University. Earlier, he has served as the Acting Rector of Silk Road International University of Tourism. He is fluent in more than five languages, including Persian, Turkish, and Russian. He holds a doctorate in economic sciences. Uh, Dr. Turayev, you are most welcome, sir. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Меня попросили заменить профессора Бахада Тураева. Сейчас я начну демонстрацию экрана. Всем видно э, презентацию? А... Стратегическое взаимодействие Республики Узбекистан и Исламской Республики Пакистан. А... Стратегическое взаимодействие между нашими основано на целях стратегии Узбекистана до 2030 года. Я вкратце расскажу, какие основные цели поставлены перед нами. Realization of the potential of each person. The second is uh, ensuring the well-being of the population by ensuring sustainable economic growth. Next is third is the, the uh, preserving water resources and the protection of the environment. Fourth is the ensuring the supremacy of law, organizing uh, state governance. И последнее это последовательное продолжение политики, основанной на принципе безопасное и миролюбимое миролюбивое государство. Создание достойных условий для реализации потенциала каждого человека также состоит из нескольких разных направлений. В первую очередь, это реформа в системе образования. Мы знаем, что в настоящее время в Фергане создается узбекско-пакистанский узбекско университет, и предлагаем в дополнение к нему создать программы двойных дипломов, которые относятся к пункту седьмому стратегии развития Узбекистана, с двумя университетами Пакистана, которые занимают 315 место в рейтинге QS и 367 место в рейтинге QS. Это университет КАИД и АЗАМА и Национальный университет наук и технологий. Далее мы предлагаем сотрудничество в реформах по обеспечению здоровья населения. Например, сотрудничество в области производства инсулина. Также мы знаем, что в, Пакист... в Пакистане были созданы трансдермальные пластыри для безболезненного введения инсулина больным сахарным диабетом. И мы предлагаем наладить их совместное производство, так как это приведет к улучшению здоровья населения не только в Узбекистане и Пакистане, но и во всем мире. Также мы можем сотрудничать в области производства протезно-ортопедических изделий, что соответствует пункту 23-го стратегии развития Узбекистана. Например, локализовать производство в Узбекистане таких компаний, как Bionics Pakistan. Реформа в направлении государственной молодежной политики и спорта – это, допустим, популяризация хоккея на траве в Республике Узбекистан. 
Мы знаем, что в э, Исламской республике Пакистан э, хоккей на траве – это э, национальный спорт. Очень много людей им занимается, увлекается. И мы хотели бы приглашать тренеров из Исламской республики Пакистан, организовывать дружеские матчи между нашими странами и, допустим, провести со, э, совместный узбекско-пакистанский фестиваль э, хоккей на траве, где будут проведены тематические конкурсы и будет рассказано большому количеству пришедших людей о таком виде спорта. Также для пункта обеспечения благосостояния населения путем устойчивого экономического роста мы можем в дальнейшем развивать туризм между нашими э, странами, э, например, за счет разработки э, стимулирующих мер. Э, и также мы можем создавать э, туристические маршруты, э, допустим, э, такие, как, например, по объектам э, всемирного наследия ЮНЕСКО в Республике Узбекистан и Исламской Республике Пакистан, или по следам Захира Аддина Мухаммад Бабура. Последовательное продолжение политики, основанной на принципе безопасное миролюбимое государство. Мы можем увеличить легальную трудовую миграцию между нашими странами, а также усилить взаимодействие по искоренению торговли людьми и нелегальной миграции что соответствует пункту 95 стратегии развития Узбекистана. Мы можем улучшить межведомственное взаимодействие, подписать соглашения или договора по трудоустройству и создать аккредитованные двумя государствами агентства, которые будут оказывать помощь мигрантам, в том числе в поиске работы. Также мы можем улучшить сотрудничество в области подготовки офицерского состава, пункт 97 стратегии. В 2019 году уже проходили совместные учения узбекистанских, пакистанских и турецких военных. Помимо этого мы можем направлять офицеров из Республики Узбекистан в Исламскую Республику Пакистан для изучения опыта армии а также изучать систему подготовки высококвалифицированных военных кадров. Спасибо за внимание. State Transport University for your very interesting presentation. It would indeed be very interesting to see the two nations play lawn hockey, which is the national game of Pakistan. And we also welcome our uh, brothers from the Uzbek army to the military institutes of uh, Pakistan. Thank you so much. Uh, from here, we move to our third speaker for today, who is Dr. Malike Basbenar. Topic for her presentation is a bridge between regions historical, present, and future connectivity of Uzbekistan and Pakistan. Dr. Malike is director of Uzbekistan <laughs> Operations Center in Tashkent State Transport University. She holds a PhD in philosophy and has served as a lecturer in Ming Chuan University, Taiwan. Uh, Dr. Malike, uh, floor is yours, please. All right. Um, Salam alaikum, dear colleague and esteemed uh, guest. Um, my name is Melika Bashpanar. I am the director of Uzbek and Turkish Technical uh, Cooperation Center at Tashkent State uh, Transport University. Uh, today, I would like to talk about uh, my, let me share first my presentation very quickly. <clears throat> All right, um, can you see my presentation right now? Yes, it's visible. All right, today I would like to talk about uh, bridges between region, the historical present and future connectivity of Uzbekistan and Pakistan. First, I would like to talk about uh, a historical perspective, um, exploring the rich historical contents of Uzbekistan and Pakistan, including the ancient civilization, empires and cult cultural her heritage. One notable historical figure who left a lasting imprint on the relationship between Uzbekistan and Pakistan is the 
legendary and conquerors, the statesman uh, Mirza Zahiruddin Muhammad Babur, uh, who was born in present-day Uzbekistan. Babur founded the uh, Mughal Empire in the Indian subcontinent, establishing a dynasty that will shape the course of South Asian history for centuries. Today, so the Babur even descendants rule over the vast territories spanning modern day India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, leaving behind a rich cultural agency that reflects the fusion of Central Asian and South Asian influences. Uh, right after this, talking about the, how we connected the Islamic empires and shared its heritage, uh, the, the rise of Islam further straightened the connection between the two regions. Great Islamic scholars like Imam Bukhari, born in present day Uzbekistan, had a profound influence on the development of Islamic thought in the Indian subcontinent. The, uh, the Mughal empires who traced their lineage back to Central Asia were not just the rulers, but also cultural breaches. Their magnificent architecture evident in monuments like the Lahore Fort and Bad Shahi Mosque in Pakistan a striking resembles to the architectural styles of Samarkand and Bukhara. Uh, of course, our shared past, because of the, our uh, shared past, uh, goes beyond, beyond the Silk Road. The historical ties between Uzbekistan and uh, Pakistan can be traced back to the Asian Silk Road, a vast network of trade roads that connected east uh, and west. Uh, one of the most significant roads of the Silk Road passed through Central Asia, including today's uh, Uzbekistan, and serving as a conduit for an exchange of goods, ideas, and cultures between China, the Indian subcontinent, and beyond. Of course, exploring the how Silk Road shaped the connectivity and relationship between Uzbekistan and Pakistan influencing the trade, culture, and social interaction. Uh, we should also highlight here that the diverse range of goods and uh, diverse range of goods that were traded along the Silk Road contributed to prosperity and cultural enrichment of both regions. Uh, next topic, we are going to talk about the how a fl flourishing trade and cultural exchange. Uh, <clears throat> the literary tradition both region has intertwined Sufi mystic poets like Jalalit Rumi, uh, whose tombs is actually in my uh, in my city Konya, had a dedicated following in the Mughal course of India. Miniature paintings from the Mughal era often depict uh, scenes of landscape, as you can see on the pictures, reminiscent of the Central Asia, reflecting the artistic influence of the regions. I would like to talk about the have our connectivity on the modern era. <clears throat> the modern era and the witness of renewed vigor in the relationship between Uzbekistan and Pakistan. Both nations endowed with rich cult cultural heritage and strategic geographic positions, recognize imperative and enhancing con connectivity for mutual benefits. And uh, as we know that recent uh, Pakistan Uzbekistan freight train service actually heralds a new chapter in, uh, in this uh, bilateral cooperation um, promising to unlock uh, uh, vast economic potential and uh, uh, foster closing ties between our people. Uh, the potential benefit enhanced connectivity are vast, uh, increasing the trade will lead to economic growth and prosperity for both nations. Imagine a future uh, like Uzbek textile or agriculture product seamlessly reach a Pakistani market while Pakistani manufactured uh, goods find eager customers in, in Central Asia. This economic partnership can create job boost, uh, jobs and boost innovations and improve the lives of millions. On the other hand, uh, 
collaborative uh, educational partnership, uh, collaborative education programs like students exchange or research collaborations between universities in Pakistan and Uzbekistan can foster the uh, economic excellence and uh, cross cultural understanding and also the of course the knowledge sharing uh another thing for while i was reading between like uh the the connection between oh, pakistan and uzbekistan as a turkish lady i found this very interesting like language center uh language exchange like babur heritage center and alisher nevoi center uh oh. for studying for studying Uzbek language and culture at the University of Beshawar have been established. These centers are aimed to promoting a uh, uh, study of language and uh, literature and history between two countries. I think that's also another amazing uh, uh, centers for both countries. All right. Uh, uh, I would like to also a little bit talk about my uh, the challenges and resolution uh, between two countries uh, after after I did some research about this. Uh, challenges and resolution, uh, identification of common challenges, geog geographical issues, and obstacles that impact the bilateral relationship between Pakistan and Uzbekistan, requiring strategic, strategic approaches and collaborative solution. Uh, geographical distance, I mean, Uzbekistan and Pakistan are not immediate neighbors. Uh, this is one of the challenge I can see. Uh, separated countries and such, it is separated countries such as uh, Afghanistan and Tajikistan. This geographical distance can pose a challenge uh, and establishing the direct connection to the Pakistan and Uzbekistan. And another uh, challenge I can see that transit roads, the most direct and road between Uzbekistan and Pakistan passes through Afghanistan and political in, in, uh, um, in instability and security concern in Afghanistan can disrupt the transit roads and higher connectivity uh, between two countries. And also, like uh, we can see, trade barriers like uh, such as tariff or non-tariffs uh, can impact the smooth of flow of goods. And uh, I think both countries also like uh, another challenge we can be can see uh, infrastructure developments. Uh, both countries may require a significant infrastructure uh, development to um, improve the connectivity like including roads or railway force or digital infrastructure. Uh, and the financing and implementing such project can be uh, uh, challenging for, for both, uh, especially like less developed countries as uh, Uzbekistan and Pakistan. And also like last uh, option, of course, we can see that uh, security concern uh, between two countries ensuring the security of infrastructure and uh, transit roads is crucial for enhancing connectivity. <laughs> well, as my conclusion, uh, I will say that uh, uh, the historical connection between Uzbekistan and Pakistan is a testament to the enduring bonds forged through trade, culture, and mutual exchange over millennia. As both nations navigate the challenges, the opportunities of the modern world, they carry with the legacy of the shared past, serving as a source of inspiration and, and resilience in their journey toward a shared future of prosperity and cooperation. Thank you so much for your uh, for listening to me, uh, and thank you again for this uh, invitation. I'm very glad contributing to the discussion and. Uh, uh, collaboration with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Manike. It was very interesting to listen to the perspective of a uh, Turk national on Pakistan and Uzbekistan. You very rightly pointed out that Mr. That Zahiruddin Babur is the most significant figure when it comes to the shared past of South Asian subcontinent and the Central yes. Asian region particularly Uzbekistan. We also have a shared past, which dates back to Silk Road, connecting the South Asian con subcontinent 
to this uh, unique region of Central Asia. Thank you so much for your uh, enlightened presentation. Uh, Thank you. From here we would... Thank you. I would now invite our learned speaker for today, Ambassador Khalid Usman Kassir. He holds a vast experience in diplomacy spanning over 33 years, in which he has served as Pakistan's ambassador to Tajikistan, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Greece. If not to mention about his other assignments within and without Pakistan that he where he has served in his 33 years tenure as a diplomat. Uh, he would be touching upon the challenges in Pakistan-Uzbekistan cooperation. Ambassador Khalid, uh, we welcome you, please. Assalamu alaikum and very good morning, everyone. I hope uh, uh, you can hear me. And uh, I ask Hasib to put my presentation on the screen, please. Yeah, next slide. Well, to, to, to begin, uh, I would like to just draw your attention. I'm sure uh, uh, the audience must be knowing it already, but still I'd like to flag to put the, uh, you know, my pre presentation in the right context. You see the international system basically offers our three planks for conducting interstate relations. Uh, multinationalism, regionalism, or bilateralism. I said ism if it doesn't sound that derogatory, but common observation is, that multinational uh, cooperation has basically delivered uh, for the countries who had won the Second World War. Regionalism has been succeeded in certain uh, geographical areas like in Europe or ASEAN, where the people, the country share common values and they have common aspirations. Bilateral relations have also transformed over the years. No bilateral relation can be discussed or can progress without taking into consideration the regional dynamics of the countries involved and also the changes taking place in the international arena. Next. I am uh, very impressed by the presentation made before me by all the speaker. Uh, areas are very well covered, but I will certainly, I will just, uh, I just uh, highlight uh, the challenges and suggest a uh, way forward. Before I do that, I Adam saw that the two countries are on the right path. Yes, they are on the right path, surely, but the path is a little bumpy. And unless we know that, then we will not be able to resolve those bumps and make this path to, uh, to, 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 to deliver everything smoothly uh, for the intended uh, objectives or goals that two countries have. On cultural affinity, very well. It is. Uh, it is. It is. It is. I. I can only add that uh, we share. Uh, if not share, we have common DNA actually. Uh, not only Uzbekistan, but with Central Asia. Historical links are well known. Our social setup, our family system, more or less, are the same. I can say with certain degree of confidence that mother-in-laws of Uzbekistan are as good or cynical as that of Pakistanis. So we have very close cultural uh, affinity, but at the same time, uh, we have not been able to introduce widely to our population. Um, there have been, when the relations were established, in 90s, they were 
regular exchange of troupes and you know cultural troupes used to come music art these areas have taken now the backstage and uh, relevant authorities have to pay attention to them there's a good omen that uh, in the political sphere some activity has started in the last three years. And this is a very positive, uh, I, I would say, development. Pakistani Prime Minister visited in 2021, 22. The president of Uzbekistan came to Pakistan. The two, uh, you know, leaders of the, the highest level, they have been meeting on the sidelines of, you know, SEO, ECO, or United Nations are in, 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 in Beijing. So this is this is very good. This tempo is to be maintained. Some uh, it should not happen that in certain uh, countries we observe uh, no visit takes place for over years. And now if this tempo is maintained at least biannual or three years, some high level visit should you know take place. It's very good that political and diplomatic consultation mechanism the two countries has. Third round is, is planned next month. In April, it will happen. The second was, you know, a couple of years in 2020, perhaps it was uh, during the COVID-19, that, that session was held. And this mechanism was agreed in uh, 2015, I think. So, so many years, it's just third, uh, third round now being planned. I think this must be held every year. And now since we have the facilities of, you know, holding meetings virtually, so why not to, uh, you know, if physically it is not possible for the officials to travel, it is better they hold online meetings. It's a very good sign that the two countries have signed, you know, transit trade agreement, and also preferential trade, uh, trade agreement. There have been business forum and joint business council meetings. But one thing I like to highlight here is that these business forums and J, uh, giant business uh, council meetings should not be uh, presented or attached with the high level visit only. It should, it should happen regularly. Because when it is attacked with a high level, yes, uh, business community and all those people get very high protocol, et cetera. But uh, uh, with that, the substance is sometimes it is lost. So it is very important that this interaction, making use of this mechanism now, uh, the two countries' businessmen must intensify their interaction. Similarly, Giant Ministerial Commission, it exists and there is a, a good omen that they have agreed also on the human resource development uh, agreement. And uh, Uzbek brothers and sisters know that uh, in 90s, uh, Pakistan has contributed a lot actually uh, in training, in offering courses, short courses, professional courses in the various domains, including diplomacy, information, railway, and so on and so forth. And uh, nevertheless, the time has changed now. Uh, we have to think of other areas where, you know, two countries can help each other. And I will be highlighting subsequently some of the areas. Next slide, please. National Bank of Pakistan have closed down, you know, all its uh, branches, uh, you know, in Central Asia. Uh, that's not uh, uh, that that's not a good sign. And there are difficulties as well. The businessmen face. Uh, everybody knows that uh, Uzbekistan and Central Asia as a whole is a dollar sensitive area. So uh, the banking channel is facing difficulty because at this point in time, I think no LCE's letter of credit is being opened. Uh, mainly banks are owned by the state in Uzbekistan, major banks. 
and national bank of pakistan has no more capacity yet at this point in time in fact so some solution has to be found that how uh, the two uh, community uh, business community are able will be able to actually you know uh, do their business smoothly so this is very important on connectivity as uh, professor saud also highlighted uh, there was a time there were four flights actually running between uh, between lahore and tashkent and uh, uh, in fact a lot of tourism has taken place during that time and now after the covid 19 the uh, you know the two airlines line pia has no capacity at the moment and same uh, is you know is the issue with the Uzbek, uh, you know, airline to the best of my knowledge. So uh, if we are unable to connect, uh, you know, uh, two capitals or two countries uh, physically, so then business is going to suffer. So some solution has to be found. If these two airlines don't have the capacity, perhaps they could consider taking some other uh, you know airline on board uh, maybe they will ask uh, you know uh, fifth freedom uh, you know uh, for their operation but this has to be discussed and uh, if say in the next couple of years two airlines are not able to connect there will certainly a setback this airline uh, starting, uh, you know, from Termes, passing through Afghanistan and coming to uh, to Pakistan, commonly known as a Peshawar railway line, is a very huge uh, project, seven billion dollar project at this point in time. So realistically, uh, this project cannot undertake, uh, you know, uh, immediately. But intentions are good, of course. But my only fear is that this project also not remain like TAPI and CASA 1000, you know, those two projects that we have in Central Asia, and they have yet to see, uh, 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 you know, light of the day. So, uh, but nevertheless, uh, some work has started on this. Uh, and uh, I, 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 I learned that uh, some uh, the three investment is being sought this project and this is a very good uh, development i think uh, two countries have to uh, seek investment jointly for this project then only it will succeed next now visa is very important if it's a basic uh, requirement that two countries must have, you know, visa facilitation for each other's uh, citizens. There are concerns, security, yes, those could be uh, taken into consideration, but this is something not good that Uzbekistan is the only country in Central Asia with which Pakistan does not have visa abolition agreement. And uh, one of the uh, problem is that uh, Pakistan has three categories of passports, diplomatic, official, and ordinary, whereas Uzbekistan has diplomatic and ordinary passports. So experts, the authorities must get involved and discuss and find way, uh, way forward. And this is also something uh, uh, Uzbek authorities have to reconsider that they have excluded Pakistan from the permanent residency visa. On the other hand, uh, Pakistan has extended uh, visa facility online to all Uzbek, uh, Uzbek, Uzbek uh, businessmen. So this is something uh, in an area which really requires immediate attention. Tourism potential is a lot of Pakistanis, uh, not only Samarkand, Bukhara, or Shiva, uh, but people in general another region they would like to visit from Pakistan. And similarly, Pakistan has a lot to offer. 
and two countries in the domain of tourism can cooperate, share expertise, share experience with each other, and develop, modernize uh, their system facilities further. So this this is an area which 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 can really uh, play a vital role in 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 in, in developing. Uh, close relation and economy as well of the two countries. Next. Security and defense. Taliban in Afghanistan is a uh, reality. Two countries has have to live it with it. There's no other, there's no other way. So it's very important that constructive en engagement with them and making them to realize that they are sitting at a very strategic position and they can use it for the betterment of their people. And uh, uh, everything has to come into South Asia, to Pakistan and further, may it be Tapi or Khasa or uh, railways, it has to pass through Afghanistan. So therefore, and it will bring prosperity and uh, you know development of Afghanistan as well. So it is very important. There are concerns of you know Islamic movement element, which are some elements are present tribal belt. Uh, I am sure that uh, the security and defense authorities of the two countries are very closely uh, you know cooperating on this, and this must continue. Military exercises, giant military exercises with uh, involvement of uh, Turkish soldiers was very good uh, development, I would say. And now five years ago, uh, they should reconsider that it should become a regular feature. The military high officials exchanging are exchanging visits. This is also a very good omen. But however, we have to keep in mind that. Uh, uh, security takes paramount uh, importance while 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 strategizing or while uh, working out uh, you know working relations be between between our between our between the countries. It's very important. But nevertheless, uh, way forward can be found in it. Next. Now. To conclude, uh, I just highlighted keeping the time in view, the bumps that we have in our path to development, to bring the country close with the spirit and with the hope that we will be able uh, to, to, to resolve uh, all these issues and so that our relations become uh, productive, progressive and good for our two countries. said that bilateral relations uh, are very important, but at the same time, bilateral relations have limitations. Because, uh, for instance, in today's world, and the system that we are living in, barter trade is not possible. Pakistan is a member of WTO, and Uzbekistan is trying to get into WTO. Similarly, even in the defense cooperation, Pakistan is signatory to certain conventions. So in that context, relations are to be reshaped. So bilateral relations have limitations, but at the same time, we have to see whether within the space available that we have, are we exploiting it to the maximum? Are we able to benefit to the maximum. So that's, that is the main message that I like to, uh, you know, send across. Security concerns are there, as I spoke earlier, a close coordination, intelligence sharing, and uh, because this is unfortunately a now uh, a sort of a challenge which has become enterprise. There are certain elements, uh, foreign elements, they are involved, there are certain uh, agenda driven. So they, these concerns should not derail our ongoing cooperation. At present, 
the uh, pakistan is certainly facing economic difficulties although uzbek economy is in a better position at this point in time and i'm sure that in the coming years uh, pakistan economy pakistan has the capacity has the potential and we will be able to you know gain certain level up we will come back you know uh, and our economy will grow and uh, it will it will and will be able to you know uh, share uh, more uh, areas of development and progress and projects and so on and so forth lack of capital as I said system variation system variation is there for instance uh, railway project we have taken you know the technicalities the gauge the two countries use for the track so this system variation has to be understood it is very important whether it is banking that sector whether it is defense whether it is uh, connectivity uh, the system variation has to be uh, understood correctly and uh, and 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 then solution form similarly the language barrier for instance <laughs> Uh, now I am sure in Uz Uzbekistan, the 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 in the younger generation particularly, there is a trend of learning English, and in Pakistan also now there are people they are trying to uh, you know learn various languages, in, including Russian language. But this is an area where in the thirty years uh, very less attention has been paid. So language barrier has to be. Uh, uh, you know, are to be removed. Next. Highlighting uh, all these, uh, you know, areas, difficulties, I would say that first and foremost is that tempo of high level visits, visits of the officials, it should remain, it should be intensified and uh, we the two countries must remain engaged and keep discussing and finding solutions. Revive air connectivity, as I I said, if two countries are unable to do it, let's say in next couple couple of years, they have to find solutions. Some airline uh, they have to reconsider to allow some other airline to you know touch two destinations. Business, as I said earlier, business interaction should not remain you know attached with their when vvi visit taking place the business community must come closer and interact with each other more regularly as i earlier pointed out visa and banking transaction system must be resolved public and private partnership and value addition project this this is very important as I said, when I say that there is system variation, we must understand that in Uzbekistan, uh, state is virtually involved in every business. And in Pakistan, we have both uh, in the government sector as well as in the, in the private sector. So some mechanism can be worked out where public-private partnership can be promoted. Value addition projects, uh, I'm very optimistic uh like in textile like in uh, you know leather goods and uh, you know other pro uh, products two countries can certainly cooperate with each other in certain areas pakistan has advantage mainly in in in, in textile for instance so and uh, very high quality cotton is produced by by uzbekistan so two countries i'm sure they are already there are, as the as 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 per the claim of the embassy of uh, ambassador of uh, Uzbekistan in Pakistan, there are number of project actually going on, and this is very good, uh, omen, and uh, they must be supported. Afghanistan, less said the better, but the reality is that Afghanistan holds a real key. So stability in Afghanistan is very uh, important as uh, ambassador saud also pointed out it's very important that we must engage with them constructively and make them to realize uh, that uh, uh, 
that a normal country with a normal way of conducting its state affairs uh, can uh, will be in the interest of their their state as well as their people. As I had said that bilateral relations have limitations, which means that uh, bilateral relations are can be developed, keeping in, 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 in consideration the regional uh, dynamics. It is very important. So therefore, success of CPAC is of paramount importance. And China uh, must act as Germany of the region. That will, that will certainly, that will certainly help. And I'm sure that some, uh, some, some development is taking place on this account as well. So uh, when I say in region, you might have observed in every region, if it is Europe or it is a, uh, ASEAN country, there is some big country. In Europe, for instance, there have been crises in Greece and there are other countries in, uh, you know, Romania and other countries and, and Germany uh, came forward to, you know, um, help them out. So it is very important. China is in a very uh, better position to, you know, uh, get involved and in bilateral relations as well as regional relations they are to be coordinated and so that we are able to we are able to develop fast and finally relations uh, between pakistan and india are to become normal because if south asia becomes normal certainly central asia will benefit and uh, so will south asia so thank you very much so uh, for for your patience Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Khalid Usman Kassif. Your observations about potential hurdles in Pakistan and Uzbekistan relations are noteworthy. However, every problem can be addressed given the will is there and there at the moment is a lot of will found on both sides, uh, Pakistan and Uzbekistan. Thank you so much for your kind input, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to request the Ambassador of Pakistan to Uzbekistan his Excellency Ahmed Farooq to grace the occasion with his concluding remarks. Thank you, uh, Tuba. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala Rasulil Kareem. Uh, distinguished speakers and uh, dear participants, uh, good morning and assalamu alaikum to all of you. It is with immense pleasure uh, that I welcome you to today's event focusing on the key elements of Pakistan-Uzbekistan relationship. Um, on behalf of the Embassy of Pakistan, I would specially like to thank the Institute of uh, Regional Studies Islamabad and Tashkent State University of uh, Transportation for partnering with the Embassy in holding this event. Uh, this is first of its uh, kind uh, of uh, first event of its kind and hopefully many more are to follow on this uh, today we are privileged uh, to be joined by a very eminent panel of scholars and experts who have shared their views uh, on how to further enhance the relationship which has a long and deep uh, religious cultural historical ties and a common present and intertwined future be it the Sufi saints of uh, Samarkand or Bukhara or Zahiruddin Babur, our architecture, food, they're all symbols of our common heritage. Uh, Uzbekistan is the most populous country of, and centrally located country of Central Asia. And Pakistan provides the shortest and most feasible and economically viable uh, link uh, to Central Asia, uh, to Arabian Sea to the landlocked Central Asia. Pakistan itself is a market of 250 million people. Um, our relationship recently have be, has, be, has seen an upward trajectory as mentioned by uh, uh, various speakers. 
uh, both countries are also working with Afghanistan for uh, connectivity to realizing the connectivity potential. Now, coming to the specific points raised by our distinguished uh, speakers, I'll just like to mention some of the points. Uh, I fully agree with um, uh, with Professor Saud uh, when he uh, talks about the deep religious uh, ties and connectivity that existed before the Russian came to uh, to Central Asia and the British came to uh, South Asia. Uh, and now these old and uh, natural ties, I would say, are uh, reviving. Uh, we have immense cultural similarities. Uh, the trade is uh, is growing and it is growing 30 to 40 percent uh, and even up to 50 percent uh, a year, which is a very, very handsome rate of growth. But again, there is a lot more that needs to be done and that we are will uh, we are working to do. Both countries have uh, have outlined a figure of one billion dollars to reach their uh, to to take their a target set to uh, for their trade in coming years. Uh, preferential trade agreement has been operationalized since last year and about the uh, the train project that you mentioned uh, professor it will take reduce the time current time of uh, 12 to 13 days to 3 to 4 days from port of karachi to tashkent so that's uh, we are moving um uh, so uh, when we come to professor babur torev uh, bahadur torev uh, I, he presents a very uh, logical, organic uh, outcome of the Uzbekistan's internal way of uh, internal path to progress uh, in having a, a peaceful neighborhood and a developing relationship with its neighborhood. And I fully agree with him that there is a lot of uh, potential in cooperation between the two health sectors. Pakistan already is one of the significant pharmaceutical exporters uh, to Uzbekistan. There is more potential for um, surgical instruments and cooperation in other fields, uh, medical related. Sports cooperation is there. And if I may say so, Pakistan is one of the leading sportswear products uh, producer. So there is a lot to be there. Uh, all in all, I would say that there is a lot of food for uh, thought in what he has mentioned as possible way of uh, cooperation. Um, uh, then uh, Ms. Maleke, uh, 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 she's a Turkish national, another very brotherly country of Pakistan, another country which we share very brotherly ties and deep love and affection on both sides. I agree with her that these are the, the links of ancient Silk Road linking the ancient uh, in, in, in past China, to Central Asia and to South Asia. And these natural links are now coming back together again uh, through the possible linking of uh, pa Pakistan with Central Asia and projects like CKU, Trans-Afghanistan Railway. Uh, and there is, of course, a lot of uh, room for educational uh, and other people-to-people -people cooperation that she has mentioned. Uh, and again, uh, as I would say that uh, again, um, on part of infrastructure that he, uh, she mentioned, uh, currently we do have a corridor. It has about a million uh, tons of cargo going every year on from Pakistan to Uzbekistan, uh, both ways, uh, through Afghanistan. And it is increasing at, again, uh, uh, 60 to 70 percent a year. But the major challenge is, uh, is, is infrastructure, uh, the Salang Pass in Afghanistan from Kabul to uh, 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 Mazar-e-Sharif, 100-kilometer path that is mountainous. The road is, is not so ideal, so that's the path that we are working on. And of course, we are cooperating on security as well. So lastly, but uh, last but not least, Ambassador Asad Kaiser, uh, a very uh, eminent part of Pakistan Foreign Service and a very respected colleague. Uh, I think he has given us a lot of food for thought uh, in the shape of uh, what the challenges are and how to move forward on that. I fully agree with him uh, in the fact that uh, the bilateral relations are affected by regional situation as well as the multilateral uh, uh, scenario, which has been the case in Pakistan-Uzbekistan relation as well. Um, and I also agree with him that 
tempo uh, that uh, Pakistan Uzbekistan relations are on the right path and the tempo has to be maintained just to mention a few points in this regard uh, Pakistan this year plans to hold a, a single country exhibition in which more than 100 Pakistani companies are going to showcase their products from all lines of uh, uh, produce Pakistani produce to uh, to have to introduce them into uh, the Uzbek market. And we hope that Uzbek side will also have similar uh, exhibitions in Pakistan. Uh, we are regularly hosting since past few years the bilateral consultations. We plan to hold them shortly uh, in the future as well. Tourism, I fully agree, there is a lot of potential. But as uh, the, uh, he's mentioned, visa is an issue, direct flight is an issue, both which we are working on. Also in economic cooperation, the banking, while there are some correspondent banks that we have been able to establish in, in the uh, in past few uh, of late, but uh, the problem is still there and we are actively in touch uh, with the State Bank of Pakistan and with those big authorities to uh, have this problem uh, permanently solved. Uh, the businessmen that uh, that uh, interact with us tell us that things are much better and it's not a problem, a major issue anymore. And in defense area also, there is regular, uh, there is a confluence of interest in having a stable region, region free of terrorism, free of drugs, uh, and a safe, stable neighborhood. Uh, and uh, the defense forces are also collaborating with each other. We had high level visits La last year. We had the visit of the chief of army staff of Pakistan to Uzbekistan and chairman joint chiefs of staff committee among other visits. So there is a robust, and now we are planning to have other visits from Pakistan, uh, from Uzbekistan to Pakistan. So cooperation is going on, but I fully agree with him that we have to maintain the uh, the. Uh, uh, the momentum and it should not be one off thing and it should not have a gap in between that is the idea so uh, in conclusion I would say that today's event which was uh, first of its kind uh, is the first but many of more that are to come because this is uh, this such events and such exchange of ideas are very important firstly because they generate fresh ideas away from the government and these ideas, uh, when they bring uh, the, our academicians and scholars together, they generate new ideas, which help people like us to take things forward and to increase and better our focus of what the problems are. Secondly, in the world of today, which, uh, which demands uh, public uh, diplomacy, people-to-people -people contacts, contacts between the academicians and the scholarship is very important. Because these are the people who generate the critical mass in a society to take the ideas forward and generate in the society, within the society, the space for taking the relationship forward. So it's a very, very important event. I would once again like to thank all uh, uh, participants and all the speakers for sparing uh, time. Uh, and we look forward to uh, further growth of this people-to-people -people and academic uh, relationship uh, between the two countries. I will conclude by wishing all uh, the participants a uh, very happy Ramadan and uh, upcoming Eid. And to all my Uzbek friends, a very happy, uh, all the best wishes for uh, Noroz that is to come in, uh, in, in a few days. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh... The most important thing that most of our speakers have highlighted, <laughs> sorry, including the Honorable Ambassador, is the continuity of this uh, small steps of cooperation. Uh, with this, we come to an end of today's webinar. We warmly thank all our learned speakers who have taken time out from their busy schedules and have contributed from their vast knowledge and experience. I conclude this webinar with remembering the deep-rooted historical cooperation between Pakistan and Uzbekistan and with a word of prayer for the peace, prosperity, and well-being of the people of the two countries. Happy upcoming Navroz and Eid and happy Ramadan. Thank you all. Stay blessed.